There haven't been salmon in the upper Elwha for almost 100 years, but that's changing. There's probably about, uh, geez, 50 or more. I see them all right there. Virgil Bennett and Gabe Youngman are down on their knees peering into a fish trap in a side channel of the Elwha. They're members of the Elwha Klallam tribe and work on fish restoration. Below them, tiny flickers of silver flash amongst the plant debris caught in the trap. The men sift through the debris, counting the fish they find. Five Wow, uh, There's that one in here too, that real small one. Yeah, see, there he is. These baby coho salmon are on their way downriver to the open ocean. They are the first wave of what many hope will one day be robust runs of salmon in this river, now that the dams are being removed. Virgil Bennett has high hopes for these little guys. With all these high counts, you know, it's gonna, they're gonna produce, you know, a lot more fish in the future. And it's pretty good to see them coming up on the rivers that, you know, they weren't before, you know, and so it's awesome. After they're counted, the fish are released to continue their journey to the ocean. On their way out, they might pass by a rather odd sight at the mouth of the river. So I'm just getting the backpack and the GPS equipment ready to go to collect data. Andrew Stevens is an oceanographer with the U.S. Geological Survey. Stevens straps on a backpack full of scientific gear and starts walking along the rocky beach at the river's mouth. In his hand, he's got a device that looks like your car GPS on steroids. And so basically I just collect the elevation and horizontal position as I walk along. And we walk many miles over the beach and form a map over as I walk along. Over the past hundred years, millions of cubic yards of sediment have collected above the dams. Now it's moving downriver. There's a lot of things that we're seeing that are, are different. Um, there's a lot more mud and really muddy stuff in the, in the river and a lot more sand. So the fine grain material that just really wasn't around is starting to show up. But don't pack your beach towel just yet. This is not a beach you would want to get a tan on. There's lots of sand, there's cobbles. Dam removal will definitely bring more sand down for the, the coastline. So maybe there will be tanning babes <laughs> in the future. <laughs> the dams prevented the river from delivering the dirt and sand that make for healthy coastal habitat for fish and shellfish. Instead, most of the sediment in the river got stuck above the dams, so the clear water below basically just scoured the coastline instead of supplementing it. This is a lunar landscape. It's one of the most hostile nearshore environments you'll find anywhere because of the sediment starvation. Ann Schaefer is a biologist and executive director of the Coastal Watershed Institute. The group has been doing a monthly census of the fish hanging out in the tiny sliver of good habitat left at the mouth of the river. I mean, it looks kind of like a murky pond to me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we all thought. But this little fragment that we're looking at right here is the highest functioning area in the Elwha estuary right now. The baby coho that Virgil Bennett and Gabe Youngman were counting up river from here will eventually come to this lush sliver of habitat to bulk up before heading out to the open ocean. By the time they come back in a few years, Schaefer says this will be a more welcoming environment for them. The mouth of this river will have more sediment and maybe even some eelgrass, a prized habitat for young fish and other creatures. This river is coming back to life.